Northwest Rally? What car could that be for? Oh. Huh. The rally-ish looking car. It's interesting because it is a 2012, it's actually not a Crosstrek, believe it or not. It's an Impreza Sport. Impreza Sport Cross, something. Uh, this has a 2015 Outback CVT Trans, uh, so it's not even the normal Impreza Trans. It has a FB 2.5 liter motor, so it's not even a normal Crosstrek or Impreza engine. This is the 2.5 liter swapped in. Now, I do believe it is stock heads. Yeah, so it's the stock 2-liter heads with the 2.5 block. Um, yeah, it's quite, quite interesting. The oil level light is on, and that's because the sensor is not plugged in, it tells me in my little two note sheets. Oh, yeah, she's surgy, too. Whew. Well, this thing doesn't run great, um, but we're going to do baselines on it, and we're just going to see. Ooh, she's jumpy. We're gonna see, we got some cool, oh, we got cool lights. We got all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, we have a we have a little harness, little harness set up here. Um, it's not like a full caged prepped rally car. It's more of a, more of an overland enthusiast car, but it'll be pretty cool to see what this thing can do and what we can do with the tuning software to make it work better. So that's what we're gonna do here. Stay tuned and enjoy. Yikes, well the power looks okay, 125 horse and 147, 149 torque. This is the Gref, this is one gear pull. It's got this big dip, it is just lean as can be. It's really not happy. So we're gonna get this thing dialed in because um, it is very far from being happy right now. Well, like I said, this has the FB25 block in it. And clearly it just has no idea what's going on. So we're gonna get it dialed in. It'll be great here in a minute. Got it flashed. So let's start her up, see what happens. It's always a little bit nervous the first time you start a car after you flash it for the first time. Um, because like, if you did something wrong or if the file was corrupt or who knows, like bad things can happen. So here we go. Hey, it starts and it idles. All good things. Let's see if this is any better than the last. I'm really just watching my AFR here. I wish this logger was faster. values into the tune file for it. Now we'll give it a flash. See if this is a little closer. Ready to do another pull here. Let's see if this is a little bit less richy rich. It's still full of quite a bit of fuel. Let's see if it's less.
just gonna say that it's not fast, but it's not terrible. Final results on the baseline, 123 horse and 145 torque, and then tuned, big increase, 141 horse and 150 foot-pounds. Not bad, not bad for just a tune. The red is before. Uh, technically lost some power, but it is different days. Torque is identical. You can see the graph is pretty much the same. So without making any tuning changes, there is no gains really to be had that are notable. So we're going to go ahead and make some tuning changes and see what happens here. So I went ahead and added timing, and I did it in the not correction advance table instead of in the main timing table. So what this is going to allow is if the dynamic advance comes down, then it will just take the timing out and it will leave it out. If I put it in the main table and you accidentally put the car on regular or you needed to put the car on regular, it wouldn't have anywhere for the not correction to go. And so by putting this extra advance, now all 10 of this was an extra, I added four degrees. We're gonna see if four is too much or what, but, um, sorry, I added three. Uh, by putting it in this table, if it takes the timing back out, then it's just gonna leave it out through the dynamic advance multiplier. Now, a lot of people who think they know about tuning think that the dynamic advance multiplier should always be at full advance. And on the turbo cars, that's pretty true, but on these naturally aspirated cars and realistically factory cars, the dynamic advance multiplier is almost never at full advance. So, as you can see, our advance multiplier currently is at zero, um, which is kind of weird. I don't know why it's at zero. Oh, there it goes. Now it's at one. So now we're up to one advance multiplier, which means it's gonna give it all of the timing in this knock advance table. But if it went down to say 0.7, it would be back at where we were on 90 or, 89 or 87 octane. So we're on 92 octane now. We're gonna see if it's enough to keep the advanced multiplier at one. It was at one when it came in earlier, so it, had, it was giving it all of the advance it could. We'll see. a bit of work I was able to get a pretty decent average torque increase uh, up to about 4100 rpms we've got about 10 foot pounds for the most part and about five horsepower through there you'll definitely feel that but it doesn't really carry out the top anymore fun stuff I know interesting results interesting um, the reasons if you want to really get technical that it's not really picking up any more power uh, it's because this engine just isn't, uh, doesn't have enough compression ratio. Um, it's, it's just not, it's not high strung enough. It's not designed to breathe enough to need that additional octane. And so what I was able to do down low here is use that cam timing to basically just create a bunch of extra cylinder pressure. And by creating a bunch of extra cylinder pressure, it can take advantage of the octane and actually pick up some power. Whereas on 87 octane, it was too much cylinder pressure and it wasn't really able to pick anything up. So that's what we've done. We basically artificially, through the use of cam timing, pushed more air into the cylinder, 
clamping all that air down, giving it more time to compress. And then because of that, the additional octane actually let us pick up power. So here we are on premium compared to the baseline, 141 horse and 154 torque. Look at it, it's just more everywhere. Big increases, huge right through there. Real big as well right there at 3,800. Definitely gonna be noticeable. That's what I got for you today. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for the next video.